Logitech's G900 Chaos Spectrum wireless gaming mouse provides professional-grade performance, their most accurate sensor, and innovative design features. See the URL in the description to learn more. Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout. Today we're here to talk about the Huawei MateBook. This is actually a tablet PC, the first PC from Huawei, who probably most of you guys know as kind of a, a, a new incomer, uh, kind of rising star in the world of smartphones in the US. When I went to Mobile World Congress back in February, March timeframe, I got to see the Huawei MateBook in person for the first time. And I came away very impressed with it and was very much eager to get a, a sample and to do a review. We have one, I got to spend a lot of time with it over the last couple of weeks, and I have to say I came away pretty impressed with the combination that Huawei has put together. Now you can see here, we've got it, it is a, it's a rather thin, uh, it's a tablet device first, um, that you know you buy individually, you can see it's very slim, it's very thin, it's a 12 inch, ten, uh, you know, multi-touch touchscreen device, it is a 2160 by uh, 1440 resolution screen, so very high resolution, 4x3 screen. Um, it runs Windows 10 Home and Pro. It is powered by an Intel processor. Uh, we'll go more into the specs in just a second, but it is a tablet first, much like, say, the Surface Pro 4, that you then buy accessories for, including a keyboard portfolio, a dock, a, a stylus, which we'll, we'll talk about in a second. Um, now, as a tablet on its own, it's a pretty a pretty decent device, right? I am not a huge proponent of tablets just for tablet's sake, especially with Windows operating systems. Even though Windows 10 is significantly better than any version before it, Windows with a tablet-only interface uh, is kind of not ideal for me. The touch interface is more of a secondary interface that I use uh, with keyboards and touchpads. I think a lot of our, our readers are like that. Uh, a quick walk around the device shows that we are you know, pretty limited on connectivity. Uh, you have your power button up top along with your stereo speakers up top. You have a microphone input uh, as well. Um, and we have, let me, uh, along the other side, you have another microphone. You have a three and a half millimeter headphone jack, which this device is just barely thick enough to actually hold. On the bottom, you have a pogo connection to connect to your keyboard dock. And then on the other side, you have one singular USB type C connection. This is really your only connectivity option. It's for power, it's for data, it's for everything. Uh, and then up top here you have a dedicated hardware rocker uh, as well as a fingerprint reader fingerprint reader on here which actually despite its slim size it's not a slide it's just a tap and it works surprisingly well in my experience. Um, that will probably be the biggest sticking point for a lot of people is the single USB Type-C. Um, it's got power input but if you want USB connectivity, uh, in the box they do include a Type-C to Type-A adapter, so you can get one you know, USB port, standard USB 3.0 port. But if you want to go beyond that, if you want to have multiple connections or multiple devices or display output, uh, you have to go with, with one of the accessories. Uh, in terms of specifications, the model we have here is a Core M5 processor, Core M5 6Y54. So it's a Skylake-based design. It is... Um, uh, has a base clock of 1.1 gigahertz, goes up to 2.7 gigahertz, I believe. Uh, this has four gigs of memory, 128 gigs of SSD storage. It's not EMMC or anything like that. It's pretty fast storage. And um, that's pretty much the differentiating points there, right, is you can get uh, various models from M3 to M5 to M7 in terms of processors, but these are all the ultra-low power, ultra-low voltage Skylake parts. You're talking about 4.5 watt TDP processors. Uh, you can get it in four, eight gigs of memory and it does go up to 512 gigs of storage depending on how much you want to spend and how much of that storage and space you actually do need. Now the base model of this, the base price with a Core M3 processor, four gigs of memory, 128 gigs of storage is 699 bucks. That's actually $200 less than the same specifications Core M3 um, not i3, Core M3, 4 gigs, and 128 gigs of uh, SSD storage on the Surface Pro 4. So you can see that they're going for a very high quality device, um, a very well built device, but also they know they need to be competitive in terms of pricing in order to stand out from what Microsoft has put out there and what others put out there. The keyboard dock is an additional charge, it's $130. Uh, 
Um, and much like the Surface Pro 4 uh, keyboard dock, actually uh, Huawei calls it the portfolio keyboard, I came away way more impressed with this device than I thought it was going to be. The keyboard has, I think, 1.5 millimeter of key throw. I wrote the entire review for this device on, on the product. It works really, really well. The touchpad works really, really well. It's backlit. I think it's got four different levels of backlighting to it. Um, it, it's, it's surprisingly functional for productivity uses, right? So if you need to write stories, if you need to write schoolwork, if you need to do something on the go, uh, this device will definitely do that. One thing that I'm not a huge fan of compared to the Surface Pro 4 is the way um, you get the uh, different angles. There's only two different angles you get with uh, the Huawei Matebook. You get this one and then you can move that up and obviously those are using magnets to hold it up. It's actually pretty strong. It doesn't feel like it's gonna be strong, but I was able to write this review sitting on my couch with the device on my lap for a significant portion of it. And it was, you know, it moved around as I shifted, but it never kind of, the magnets never kind of broke away. Uh, it's a $130 edition. I do believe that for this type of device, for me personally at least, the keyboard portfolio, the portfolio keyboard is really a necessary add-on uh, if you want to make this any kind of productivity or productivity focused machine. Um, obviously you can do consumption only in tablet mode, but you really need a keyboard trackpad and the ability to use it as a laptop uh, if you want to uh, use it for anything school work uh, related. Um, so I, I, big fan of the portfolio keyboard. You also have the Mate Pen, which is an active stylus, uh, and it works really well with the device. It's, um, it's got dedicated hardware buttons for the eraser and then a, a context, you know, that you can use for product selection or bringing up submenus and that type of stuff. It works really, really well. I think they claim 2048 different uh, pressure sensitiv sensitivity um, capability, I guess, on the pen. So a very uh, good, it was very responsive to writing, very uh, low latency, uh, very much similar, or very similar to the experience I had with the Surface Pro uh, 4 devices and the Surface Book. It also has an integrated laser pointer on the backside, which is, uh, you know, it's nice for, for, for business use or for school use, where that's interesting. And uh, it all, the, the laser pointer actually runs on the same battery as uh, the device itself. So it's actually micro USB but they do give you a cable for that as well. So you can actually charge it from the tablet itself. So you don't have to worry about having a secondary, secondary cable. So that's the pen. Um, uh, one, one accessory they do give you with the portfolio keyboard for the pen that I am not a fan of is this little magnetic loop. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and shut this so I can demonstrate what we have. When you shut it, it's actually really nice. It kind of, it keeps the, the, the tablet very protected, but it's still very svelte, still very clean. And obviously you can get this in a bunch of different colors as well. This loop is meant to hold your mate pen, right? Seems reasonable. And then through magnets, that direction, it holds on to uh, the, the portfolio part here. Now the problem is, I will demonstrate. I'm gonna take this pin out. No, I'm not. I'm actually removing the whole loop. The magnets are not strong enough to install or remove the mate pin without holding onto it. Um, and I did have an instance where I threw this in the back seat of my car, uh, and as I took it out of the car, this slid off and I accidentally left the pin and the loop in the back of my car. Now, I didn't lose it in this instance, but I could see very easily how you would. I had the same concern about the Microsoft Surface Pro 4 and its magnetic um, uh, kind of attachment system for its pin as well. So a lot of that carries over here. Um, so I just used the fingerprint reader. It was again, very fast, very accurate. Uh, so that's kind of my concern with the mate pin. And then the mate dock is an interesting device as well. So this is what it is. It's, it's a kind of a magnetically wrapped uh, in leather device. Um, the magnets, again, aren't very strong. It has a spot to hold the pin in it, but when you put the pin in it, either the leather, the leather needs to stretch out or something like that, or the magnets aren't strong enough, um, but that doesn't, it doesn't stay closed when you have that. So uh, in terms of design, I'm not a big fan of the design of the dock, uh, and it does have a little bit of, of space in here for you to hold your micro USB to full-size USB adapter, as well as the Type-C to Type-C, uh, or Type-C type to micro USB uh, cable for charging your devices or attaching other devices. Um, but in terms of functionality, if you take it out of the case and you kind of look at it on its own, this essentially has a USB 3.0 Type-C connection. It has a input here so that you can pass power through so you're still able to charge the device when it's plugged in. You have two USB 3.0 ports, you have a gigabit ethernet port, and then on the backside you have an HDMI and a VGA connection. So, you know, 
if you're willing to carry this around with you, you do get two more full USB ports, Ethernet, uh, and two display outputs, uh, all while maintaining your uh, USB or your, your, your Type-C power input connectivity. The problem is, is it's not a particularly well-designed dock station, I guess. Um, the, the fact that you have this loop that it creates looks like something that might be kind of broken or worn out relatively easily after moving in and out of your backpack. I wish this kind of wrapped around a little bit and maybe snapped in place. It would also be cool, kind of has the shape and demeanor of it, but if this also had an integrated battery in it as well, maybe make it a little bit lar larger like the uh, kind of the, the battery adapters we've seen for the Dell XPS 13, for example, where this would be a little bit bigger. It has this connectivity dock capability, but it also has a battery for extending the battery life uh, of the device itself. So that's the Mate dock. Uh, this is uh, $90, so it's significantly less expensive than the dock meant for desktop computers on the Surface Pro 4, but they're slightly different, slightly different devices. The uh, Mate pin, by the way, is 60 bucks. Performance-wise, these are Core M-based devices. So they're Skylake, they're fairly high performance, fairly high IPC, but they're not going to run away with benchmark results. And if you compare it directly in terms of you know, benchmarks and encoding or rendering uh, the Core M3 or M5 or M7 to a Core i3, i5, or i7, this device is always going to lose to the Surface Pro 4 in that regard. Um, for example, our testing uh, of this one is a Core M5 processor, and we were comparing it to a Surface Pro 4 with a Core i5. Now, in the benchmark results, you'll see anywhere from 30 to 60 percent better performance uh, on the Surface Pro 4, and you know there's really no getting around that. If you're doing any kind of video encoding, photo editing, transcoding work, anything that is actually compute intensive, you're going to need more compute power than this has, probably. But if you're only doing that stuff very occasionally, and the vast majority of your work is online, email, um, basic spreadsheets, uh, uh, you know watching video, uh, doing email, that type of stuff, um, the, the Core M processor has plenty of performance to get that done. And I was able to go through a full week of using this as essentially my primary machine without any kind of complaints about performance. Uh, you know, I had, had Chrome open with, you know, a dozen tabs, and I had Photoshop open to do a little bit of work. And, and you know, when you were doing filters or something like that or resizing, it was slower for sure, but it wasn't unworkable or unmanageable. Uh, in terms of gaming, Obviously, this isn't going to be a gaming device. Uh, I was able to run Rocket League on here at the bare minimum image quality settings, and it kind of looked like a different game, to be fair. Uh, but it is running on very ultra low power, you know, Intel integrated graphics. Uh, I wasn't able to run The Witness very reliably, but I was able to get Overwatch to work, which I thought was was kind of impressive as well. Battery life, you're looking at 5.5 hours, based on our. Uh, proprietary Wi-Fi battery test. Um, we use Chrome instead of Edge, which is a little bit um, uh, more power hungry uh, uh, browser for that. But I think it's more indicative of how our consumers and our readers actually use their devices. And we also use 180 Lux. So we standardize brightness output from the screen. So we're not basing it on percentages. This time it's, it's accurate apples to apples comparison. At, at five and a half hours, it's about 15 minutes more than the Surface Pro 4 that we had with a Core i5 processor. So it's very competitive, even though it has, I think, seven watt hours, eight watt hour lower ba or smaller battery in this device than in the Surface Pro 4. So it's an impressive design. Uh, Intel and Huawei kind of collaborated on this uh, kind of integration very closely. And it shows, right? It's, it's an impressive device in terms of design, in terms of style in terms of, of capability in a very slim, completely fanless implementation of Skylake. I, I came away really, really impressed with this device for uh, the company's first entry into the PC market. I think they have done a pretty amazing job of combining uh, how it looks, how thin it is. You know, it's very simplistic. It's not flashy. There's not a lot of colors in here. There's no LEDs on the back. There's no illuminated logos. Um, it's, it just works well. And it looks good. The screen is great. Um, I, I, don't, I don't have any complaints. And the price seems to be right. To me, the kind of sweet spot for here is if you get a Core M5 processor, 8 gigs of memory, 256 gigs of storage. I think that's right around $1,000 plus your accessories. $130 uh, if you want the keyboard, $60 if you want the pen, uh, $90 if you want the dock. So you are going to add a little bit to that. Um, so it's not a, a budget tablet in that regard. But if you're looking for something that is attractive, uh, that is capable um, and that is really well designed, I really think you should give 
uh, the Huawei MateBook a look. Now, we have a full review over at PCPro.com. Obviously, we have the full written uh, uh, portion of this that has benchmarks and battery life tests and, uh, and all the metrics and, and writing and styles and stuff that you're looking to see there. I would encourage you guys to go to there and check it out. We've got a link to it in the description here. Uh, or just go to PCPer.com and let me know what you think about this device if you think Huawei might have a winner on their hands. Thanks, guys. If you enjoyed this content, consider supporting in-depth technical content by contributing at Patreon.com slash PCPer.